Although most modern smartphones pack seriously impressive cameras nowadays, compact system cameras are still the way forward for those looking for that little bit more. Capable of producing DSLR quality shots with an APCS sensor while demanding little photographic knowledge, this unit fits right in between the entry level models and the super advanced. The Canon EOS M10. It took Canon a while to get mirrorless cameras right. The original EOS M was underwhelming with poor autofocus, while the M3 fared a little better. Even so, the newer mirrorless introduction from Canon, the EOS M10, is targeting a more entry-level user. Perhaps someone hasn't had a lot of experience with cameras, but wants an introductory unit that offers more functions than a single point-and-shoot, along with interchangeable lenses. For those users, this M10 may be the perfect choice. The package itself includes everything users need to get shooting, including a hefty user manual, a branded camera strap, a mini USB to USB cable, a country specific power cable to use alongside the included external battery charger, a Canon LPE12 875mAh battery pack, and finally the EOS M10 camera itself. In this particular package we also receive a bundled 15-45mm STM lens. Matte black in colour with a white option being available, the EOS M10 is constructed primarily of plastic, yet it does feel sturdy in the hand. In essence, the quality is as we would expect from an entry-level compact camera system. Note that this is not a waterproof design, so shouldn't be used even in a light shower of rain. Alongside the Canon branding, we have a single sensor on the front, along with a button which releases the lens cap on the front, allowing for a lens to be attached. Talking of the lens, weighing in at only 150 grams, it incorporates a collapsible design, meaning it takes up fairly little room when not in use. Its 15 to 45 mm focal length equates to 24 to 72 mm in the usual 35 mm standard, which is an acceptable all-round range for both landscapes, portraits, and street photography. It's also an STM optic, which is good news for anyone interested in using the M10's full HD recording capability as it makes for smoother, quieter focusing. With the lens attached, the camera is still reasonably compact and certainly considerably smaller than Canon's entry-level DSLRs. The EOS M10 is compatible with Canon's EFM mount lenses, but there's not a massive amount available, with only five made by Canon. You can use an EF EOS M adapter to use EF and EFS lenses though, if you have them from one of Canon's DSLRs however. Nevertheless, Canon has kept the number of physical controls on the M10 quite low, which makes it less intimidating. In addition to the shooting mode switch on the top of the camera, there's the power button, video record button, and the shutter release, which is surrounded by a dial for making setting adjustments. Meanwhile, on the back of the camera, there's just the menu and playback buttons in addition to the navigation pad, which also gives a quick route to exposure compensation, flash, information, and exposure lock, and the central Q set button. Like the other EOS M cameras, the M10 doesn't have a viewfinder built in, so images must be composed on the 3-inch touchscreen display on the rear. There's no hot shoe or connection port, so it's not possible to connect an optional electronic viewfinder or external microphone either. Nevertheless, the screen does flip up, making low-level shots much easier, and rotates a full 180 degrees, placing the camera into selfie mode. Perfect for those vloggers out there. Otherwise, along with a metal quarter-inch 20 tripod thread at the bottom, is a door that can be opened, revealing a cavity for the included battery to slide into. Although note that if you're using a tripod plate, you won't be able to open and close the battery door without completely removing it from the plate, which is a slight annoyance. Finally, on the side, users will find a flap revealing the SD memory card slot, and another housing mini USB and HDMI ports. A sliding switch just above releases the flash, which pops out with authority with a clever hinge design. Just how this fares with regular usage is anyone's guess, although I've had no problems with it so far. Overall, the camera feels relatively sturdy in the hand. Controls are easily reachable and all buttons carry a nice tactile feel. Other than a small thumb grip, there's no other hand grip attached, so you'd probably want to attach the supplied neck strap to the metal loops to ensure the camera doesn't slip out of your hand. As there's no viewfinder, the screen must be used for composing images at all times. It provides a clear view with lots of detail in low light, and with the brightness cranked up to its highest level, it's not too bad in direct sunlight either. It's very responsive and the menu system is relatively easy to navigate. With a little practice, you'll be surfing through options in no time. 
The EOS M10 is built around an APS-C 18 megapixel CMOS sensor and Canon's Digic 6 processor. That's a more than capable sensor to be squeezed into a camera body of this size, and it's actually the same processor as found in the award-winning Canon 750D DSLR. As the M10 is an entry-level camera, it lacks some of the quick access dials of the EOS M3 for changing shooting and exposure modes, as well as exposure compensation. All of these are available through the touchscreen interface, but they're a bit buried in menus. Although if you're a beginner shooter, you might not need the constant access. With NFC and Wi-Fi on board too, it packs in the basics, if not really offering anything more than most rivals. Canon has updated the focus system too, using a 49-point hybrid phase detection system that I've found worked pretty well. It occasionally hunted in low contrast scenes, but the touchscreen focusing really helped make sure the right areas were in focus when using a large aperture. You can also capture video in 1080p 30 frames per second, and there's a dedicated video shutter button which means you don't have to swap settings. Images straight out of the camera were decently sharp in good light, but unsurprisingly you begin to see noise in low light situations. The camera always sets the shutter speed to sensible hand holding speeds, but the kit lens image stabilisation really helped in the low light shooting scenario. The kit lens only has a maximum aperture of f4, but even then the lens provided surprisingly good depth of field. Video captured at 1080p was also rather good under well lit conditions. Again, depth of field is okay, as is dynamic range. It's not going to win you any awards, and it's probably on par with the type of video captured with a modern smartphone to be honest, but for the vloggers out there it's a great unit. There's no slow motion recording and 30 frames per second is the best you'll get, although there is a dedicated video shutter button which means you don't have to swap settings. All in all, it's a rather good performer. I was left rather impressed by the M10's capabilities for a compact mirrorless camera. It certainly made capturing images fast and easy, and I can see it certainly appealing to its beginner target market. The EOS M10 is a nice camera for someone looking for a dedicated unit that offers more control and better image quality than a smartphone or a compact camera with a small sensor. Having an APS-C sensor with 18 megapixels makes it easy to blur background creatively when you want to, as well as helping to keep noise in check. The camera does have its downsides though. If you're a more serious photographer looking for a backup, then you'll likely be a little disappointed with a few of its emissions. There's no hot shoe, meaning you'll be unable to attach a flash or external microphone. Talking of microphones, there's no external microphone option either. Lack of a viewfinder may be a deal breaker for some, and video capture tops out at a seriously unremarkable 1080p at 30 frames per second. On the other hand, if you like that Canon look, this camera certainly has it. With well-implemented touch controls and a sensible menu structure that's easy to use and a great next step for those looking to discover more advanced level functions. If you're looking for something better than your smartphone, but aren't ready to jump onto the DSLR wagon, this may well be the perfect option.